everybody, Joe and Sean here with Revival Brothers. Uh, we're here to show you how to navigate through IPA. Uh, everything from opening the project to saving your file. So with that, right now we're looking at the IPA file manager. And in one of our previous videos, we showed you how to use this as a tool to organize your projects. Once your projects are organized, you, you click on the project that you wanna work on you click on open and when you click on open it's going to launch excel and it's going to launch a few other things the scripts in the background and it may take um you know five to ten seconds to launch but once it launches everything's uh, very quick to edit inside the application once you're in the application itself you'll notice whichever package you purchased it'll be highlighted and it'll show unlocked this is the front page. There's multiple pages to this. There's one main analytics page that you really have to worry about, but I'm gonna show you how to navigate through this. First off, with you know, on, on this uh, opening splash page, we have an area where you can set your zoom, and we have a video on how to set that zoom if you're using a computer that might not have true HD resolution. We have videos that you can review and then um, we have information here about Revival Brothers and other services that uh, you might be interested in. And approved trusted vendors, which we're actually working on right now, and that'll be updated within the next uh, month or so. So all you need to do once you get to this, this sheet is click the Start Here button. That'll bring us to the input sheet. And this input sheet was designed to enter an address. We're not gonna actually do any kind of analysis on this, are we, Sean? No, we're just uh, going to just show the navigation part of the IPA. So okay. we'll just put in a, a dummy address right now. So we're just going to put in anything. doesn't really matter. But this does have to be filled out for you to get to the next sheet, the analyzer sheet. Then we need to tell it whether it's a note or an REO, whether it's vacant or occupied. I'm going to go ahead and select note just to show you that when you do select note, there's other information you need to fill out related to that note, the unpaid principal balance and the, the loan details. If you click on REO, those don't apply. Whether it's vacant or occupied, if you don't know, I'd always click on occupied and then you click on analyze, it brings us to the analyzer sheet. And here on the analyzer sheet, we can navigate back to where we were by clicking on the IPA icon in the upper left-hand corner. And then if we wanted to get back to the analyzer sheet, we click on the start here button, and then it, it brings us to the input sheet where we input all of our information and then analyze. And then we're back in the, in the analyzer sheet. We do have other sheets in here, contacts for example, which helps you keep organized. Anybody associated with the project can go into here. You can add however many contacts you want. You can add notes related to those contacts and you can search through them. So this is a very helpful tool that keeps you organized on a per project basis. And then if you want to learn um, some tips and tricks or terminology, we've added that as well in here. We've got quite a library of information, so feel free to go in, search it, and, uh, and, and sift through it. Going back to the analyzer sheet, we have buttons across the top. Now these buttons are only up here if you've purchased the automation version. In each version, these are either available or not available. So for the analytics version, for example, I think maybe one or two are open. On the production version, we have most of the calculation. In fact, I think all the calculations open. The due diligence part is not. And then I think all this works as well. In the automation version, everything works and everything is unlocked. So with that, when you get to this analyzer sheet and you have your address in, your address will be located here in this address bar. And make sure this address is correct because if it's not correct, when it goes out and it looks for information related to that address, it, it won't populate the information correctly. So make sure that that address is correct and everything is spelled correctly and the numbers are right. Once you, once you have that address in there, and let's say, let's say for instance, you get to the sheet and the address is bad and you need to change something. All you gotta do is click on the input button, go back to the sheet, change the address to whatever, um, whatever it needs to be and go back to the analyzer sheet. And you'll see that that was updated. So when this is done, 
You have other buttons within the system. One, if you're in the automation version, what you want to do is just start off with the fetch all button. What that'll do is it'll go out and go through each of these buttons automatically, bring in an image, bring in parcel number, county information, bed bath, type of structure, square footage, e-values, which are you know from Zillow, iComps, HomeSnap, those types of sites. It'll take an average for you. We have a button here called Google Maps. If you click on that, it'll take the address and go into Google Maps and go right to the property itself. Over here, if you click on this Fetch All button, it'll also automatically do some base calculations for you. So it'll fill in the sheet and, and get you started very quickly so that you, you can start manipulating the numbers. If you wanted to, you can actually calc your as-is value. Uh, this as-is value is very loose. Uh, I highly recommend you get a realtor involved to figure out exactly what your as-is value is because all we're doing is backing out a projected construction fee from the ARV. So this is, this is kind of a number that you want to double check. It's a very loose one. I just wanted to let you guys know that. Estimated taxes, this will actually go out to the uh, internet and pull estimated tax information from the web and bring it in. Your insurance, you can click on this button, it'll calculate the insurance based on a percentage that we have uh, allocated down in our assumptions. And you can change all of this information very quickly simply by entering in your uh, default assumptions. Once all these default assumptions are in, you really don't have to change it unless you're doing a project that requires a little bit more or less of any of the direct costs or estimated time frames. With that, uh, I do want to say that we've added some features in here um, just to navigate very quickly. So if I wanted to go to my assumptions up here, there's an assumptions button. If I click on it, it goes, it's just basically scrolls down to the assumptions area where we just were. In this area, we can click on the back to the top and it goes to where we were. Now there's a print button and when I click on this print button, this is a nice feature. Uh, it'll bring up the ability to print it directly to a printer or if you go to Microsoft print to PDF and you click on preview or OK, it'll bring up a preview of the sheet that you're working on. Now this is great if you're working with an investor or, or other people um, involved in the project so that you can communicate where you are with the project at any time. And then you can go ahead and save it out as a PDF. If you don't have an image, if the image doesn't come up in the property, you can literally uh, right click on an image and copy it. And then up here, all you have to do is click this button, paste, and it'll paste that copied image into the window automatically for you. So that's a nice feature as well. We've added this copy button here. Uh, I wanna warn you though, this copy button, it has a bug in it that we, is beyond our control. It's a Microsoft issue. If you have any folders open when you use this, when you go to paste this information back into something, it'll be gibberish. You have to close all of your folders out before you use this button. It's unfortunate, there's nothing we can do about it. It's a Microsoft known issue and it's been there forever. So I just wanted to let you know, it's there if you need it. If you get frustrated because it's not working, that's why. Also, we've added uh, a couple of videos on, onto the side of how to use this. These videos are coming soon. We haven't quite produced them yet, but they will be here eventually with the updates. So with that, hopefully you have a good overview of how all these buttons work and what they do. And um, you know, a lot of it's very self-explanatory. One of the other things I wanted to let you know is that we've added these uh, tool tips. So if you mouse over these arrows that are red and you hover over them and you stay on them, it'll tell you what each of these areas is for and how to use it. That's a nice little feature too, especially when we're down in the assumptions area and we want to understand the insurance rate and what we're doing and how we're calculating it. You can read through it and you can understand exactly what's going on. Sean, did you want to add anything else? Uh, you covered uh, pretty much everything. One thing I do want to add to what we've uh, discussed, basically what we've done is we've uh, segmented everything out into four different sections. So uh, for the budget analysis, we have it under investment. Our due diligence, this is where all the due diligence is coming in from the internet. Then our exit strategies, this is basically all the analysis. It shows you all the numbers and analysis. 
then you have your analytics. This basically gives you an overview of your time frame versus your capital, your um, spending, and your profit that you're going to be earning on your projects. That's a good so, point because it actually helps you understand how the system works too, um, what Sean just brought up. Your investment is all of your capital. Your due diligence is, you know, making sure that, that you're researching the property correctly and your exit strategies are, you know, what does this project look like with the amount of money I'm investing? And then you have graphs that kind of illustrate that for you. So each of these columns is for a specific reason and it's not just all kind of thrown all over the place. Even though it, it appears that there's a lot of information here, it's very organized and it's very structured. And once you kind of understand how it all is laid out, I think uh, it'll be very easy for you. And, uh, and as Joe mentioned, we'll dive deeper into an actual project analysis and how all that looks. Yeah, and also if you have uh, any uh, questions, go ahead and email us at uh, uh, support at revivalbrothers.com.